Good morning. Welcome to Westminster on this beautiful sunny Easter Sunday where we come together to celebrate the end of Holy Week with the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. My name is Diane Hill and I am one of the elders here at Westminster. We extend a warm welcome to everyone worshiping with us today in the sanctuary and to those of you who are joining us online. It is great to be together. Westminster is a place where we want to live by faith, be known by our love, and to be a voice of hope. We're delighted that you are here with us today. The church is beautifully decorated for Easter with balloons and flowers, both here in the sanctuary and in the narthex, and they show us the joy and excitement of today. I hope that you had some time to enjoy the delicious continental breakfast before the service and some time to fellowship with those around you. During the service, there will be joyful music and a baptism. It is a special day and a special service. The children will remain in the sanctuary today with their families for the entire service. Thank you to everyone who has helped make this a very special day. We acknowledge that we live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Sutsina, the Iyihahi Nakoda Nations, the Otipimisiwa Métis Government within Alberta District 6, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. All of us are impacted in some way by the ecological destruction and the climate crises on our land and in the world. The Presbyterian Church in Canada is planning a webinar on Thursday, April the 25th, to hear how we might intentionally develop habits of hope while still facing the climate crisis. The link to register for the session is found in the newsletter. Please consider attending to hear how we can be a hopeful people in a time that does make many of us feel quite worried and anxious for the future. May 8th to 11th are dates for appointments to have your photo taken for our new church photo directory. Sign-up sheets will be available um, with Lisa Semple and myself in the narthex after the service, so you can book an appointment time that works for you and your family. The sessions are 30 to 45 minutes in length, with the ability to see the portrait, portraits right after they are taken and to choose what you might want in the directory and for yourself. I will ask you to read the remainder of the announcements find in the newsletter for yourself. We have a busy and exciting service. As we prepare for today's service, I wish to thank Elizabeth Clark, Reverend Christian, and Reverend Marin for leading and sharing with us in music and worship this morning. And now I invite you to stand in body or spirit as we get ready for worship together, together today by singing our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. The hymn can be found at number 243 in the hymnal, and you will also see it on the screen in front of you.
Please remain standing for our responsive call to worship. Love is stronger than death, and one word says it all. Alleluia. The dead are living, the cross is empty, the stone is rolled, and one word describes it all. Alleluia. The story has just begun, the hope is newly born, the tomb is empty, and one word says it all. Alleluia. This is the good news, this is the moment, this is the gospel. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. Please be seated. As our elder uh, Diana shared, uh, children will stay in the service today, but uh, if you feel the need to get up or to move around, there is a nursery upstairs, or feel welcome just to uh, hang out in the narthex if you need to move around or um, just as needed. And uh, thank you to, to Jack and to Jordan for leading us in music as well. Uh, please join me in our prayer of adoration. Let us pray. God of resurrecting power, we celebrate with tremendous joy that the tomb is empty. We are filled with excitement and hope when we hear that Christ is risen. We gather together as your people, remembering what you have done and hopeful about what you are doing now. You meet us with love and mercy time and time again, no matter our shortcomings, and you assure us that we are good enough. We praise and worship you even though we are far from perfect. Listen to our prayer that we offer together now in unison. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Dear God, thank you for bringing our joy back to life, just like you did with Jesus at Easter. Sometimes it's hard to keep feeling hopeful like we do today. Sometimes we feel sad, scared, or upset. We even forget how much you love us. Forgive us when we forget your Easter hope. Help us remember the joy you promise us through Jesus who is risen today. Amen. Hear this compassionate word from scripture. I am about to create a new heaven and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. Know that already, God is offering us freedom and a new beginning, a new world inviting us into community and creativity for new life and unending love. And know that despite our sometimes faltering steps in the name of Jesus Christ, you are being forgiven even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen.
invite any of our young ones who are here who'd like to come to the front for our time together to come on up. I feel like we're all ready to like run after a really fun Easter morning. It's been so great already. Come on up. Happy Easter! It's so good to see you all. I see a lot of you have balloons. Have we gotten any balloons up yet? No, not yet. It might happen. You know what? Oh, really? Oh, and another one? Oh, yeah. You know what? At Easter, we say a lot, He is risen. So, you know what? If a balloon goes up, we say, He is risen. And it's a part of what we're doing, right? We can send them on up. Today is just like one big party at church. Isn't it so great? We got to have breakfast. We got to look for eggs. We've got balloons. We've got flowers. So much singing. We have some brass. And I have some more ways for us to celebrate. But first, we're going to remember the story that we're celebrating. So I know some of you have hunted for eggs already. I There are hidden in the sanctuary today eight story eggs that have, they have a picture on the back of them that has a part of our Jesus story. Remember last week I said it was Jesus week this week? So these pictures are all about Jesus week. And we need to try and put them in order so we have the right story. And then I thought we could put them right up near the communion table where we can have the story laid out for us in pictures all day. Who feels like they're ready for another egg hunt? Me! Yeah? Okay. You know what? Why don't we go on a little search? How about we'll just set some like little rules for our search? Yeah. Yeah. We'll just, let's just walk for our search. And we'll remember all the little ones who are just a little shorter than some of us, right? And we'll let them have space to move as well. So I'll invite you to stand up and you can walk around and let's see if we can find our eight story eggs. They're kind of big, and they're very colorful. Are you guys going to find some? Oh my gosh, that was quick. We've got so many coming back. I was going to go. Do you want to lay them out on the floor, the ones that you're finding right here? Okay, how many do we have up here now? One, two, three, four, five. We're missing three. I haven't found any. You haven't found one? Can I give you a hint? There's a blue one up on the music stand. Oh, we've got some more. <laughs> okay, so let's... We, oh, you didn't find any? Look, we've got some up here. I don't have a blue. Oh, here, you can take one of these. Okay. Okay, have a seat on the stairs if you are if you're ready, if you're back. Let's see what we have. Uh, in a moment, yeah, you can. Come have a seat on the stairs. How many eggs do we have? Six? Seven? Six, seven. Oh, Lauren's found the last egg. Good job. Come and have a seat. Let's see if we can get our story in order. I want everyone to sit on the stairs so that everybody can see. Okay, does anyone remember what we waved around in worship last week? Palms. So the palms are going to be our first story piece, right? Our palms. Do you guys want to come and just sit on the stairs over here? 
Good, we have our palms. Does anyone know what came after Palm Sunday? Yes. Jesus sat down with his friends and had a special meal. Have you heard of the Last Supper? That's usually what we call it. I think this is our Last Supper picture. Does this look right? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Uh, yes, in a moment. I'll get some more out. Okay, we've got... Okay, and then after the Last Supper, Jesus did something special with his disciples' feet. Do you know what he did? He washed them. Do we have a foot washing picture? We can put? Yes, we do. Good. Okay. And let's see. Okay, and so after he washed his disciples' feet, Jesus was feeling, I think, a little scared and a little overwhelmed, and he went to a special garden to pray. Yes, we've got that one. Good. And then the next day, he met someone named Pilate who made the decision about what was going to happen. Good, we've got Pilate there. And then after that comes the saddest part in our Jesus Week story. Do you remember what happens to Jesus in the story? Yeah, he dies. And it's a very sad day for everybody. And so we have a cross there to remember that. And then where did they put Jesus after he died? In a tomb. In a tomb, right? With a big stone in front of it. Do we have the tomb picture? Good. And then what happened at Easter? He rose up. Yes, Jesus risen. You know what? Can I be the first one to let a balloon go? No, I <laughs> You already let one go? Oh, there's some that go. Well, let's say he is... We can say he is risen for the last part of the story, and if you want to release your balloon, you can, but you don't have to. You ready to go? He is risen. Hallelujah. Woo. Good one. And I know we've got lots of balloons. Some of you are asking for more. Whoa. You are. That is very smart. Okay. So, we have a special song that we're going to sing today to get us celebrating. But before we sing that special song, how about, hmm. So when you go, there's a lot of special things happening in worship today. We have a baby being baptized. Baby Mia is being baptized today. So if you want to sit up close to see the baptism today, you are more than welcome to sit right up front. I have for you, when you go back to sit, some special worship scavenger hunts. One has words if you're someone who reads or you're looking for a challenge. One has just pictures if you want one to look at. And there's some crayons and markers, and you can listen and look through the service. And if you find everything on your sheet, you can give it to me, and I'll give you a treat in return if you find them all. OK? But we're going to get ready to celebrate with some singing. So we're going to sing a special song. We sang this all through September here at church. I see Reverend Christian has some egg shakers. So if you want to celebrate in singing today with one of our egg shakers, you can go grab one from him. And how about we stand as we sing our celebration song today? Good, we can stay up here to sing. Oh yeah, do you want?
Jesus said, full authority in heaven and on earth has been committed to me. Go therefore to all nations and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. I will be with you always to the end of time. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, it says, When Jesus was baptized in the waters of the Jordan, the Spirit of God came upon him. His baptism was completed through his dying and rising again. Our baptism is a sign of dying to sin and rising to new life in Christ. It is Christ himself who baptizes us. By the spirit of Pentecost, he makes us members of his body, the church, and calls us to share his ministry in the world. By water and the Holy Spirit, God claims us as his own. In this sacrament, the love of God is offered to each one of us. Though we cannot understand or explain it, we are called to accept that love with the openness and trust of a child. In baptism, we are assured of the love that God has for us and the sign and seal of the Holy Spirit that is placed on us. I'll invite you to remain seated as we sing the first two verses of Child of Blessing, Child of Promise. comes to receive the gift of baptism. On behalf of the session and the congregation, and with great joy, we present Mia Lombard, daughter of Chris and Nellery, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Thank you. Chris and Nellery, in presenting your child for baptism, desiring that she may be grafted into Christ as a member of his body, the church, do you turn to Jesus Christ, accepting him as Lord and Savior? Do you promise, depending on the grace of God, to teach your child the truths and duties of the Christian faith, and by prayer and example, to bring her up in the life and worship of the church? And I'll invite our congregation to stand, please. The sacrament of baptism lays a solemn obligation upon all members of Christ's church. In baptism, we all take vows and enter a covenant with God, promising to support and to nurture the children in our midst until they can make their own promises of Christian faith. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Mia by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging her to follow the ways of Christ and to be a faithful member of the Church? If so, say, we do. We do. Good. And I'll invite you to remain standing as we confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so we pray together. Please be seated. Let's pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for the gift 
of your spirit and the sign of water. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the water and gave order and life to your planet Earth. By the waters of the flood, you cleansed the earth and made a new beginning with the sign of the rainbow. And in the time of Moses, you led your people out of slavery through the waters of the Red Sea and gave them land and a covenant. In the water of Jordan, Jesus was baptized and anointed by your Holy Spirit. Loving God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, by the sign of water, you cleanse from sin through the death of Jesus Christ, those who receive this sacrament. You raise them to new life through his resurrection, and you graft them into his body, the church. We pray for Chris and Nalry that you would guide them and bless them as they seek to be faithful and loving parents. Lord Jesus Christ, you came to us as a baby. We pray for all children in our midst, that they continue to grow in faith. Help us as a congregation to fulfill the vows that we have taken. Pour out your spirit on Mia, that she may be given the power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. Amen. Mia Lombard, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the blessing of God the Father Almighty rest on you and dwell in your heart forever. Amen. Mia is now received by Christ's appointment into his church. She is engaged to confess Christ crucified and risen and to be Christ's faithful servant for the rest of her life. See what love God has for us, that we should be called the children of God, for so we are. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. As we continue to welcome Mia into Christ's family today, we'll sing again the last two verses of our baptismal hymn, Child of Blessing, Child of Promise. Okay, there are um, a couple of people who are going to help us tell the Easter story today. Ewan is going to help us, and Alexa is also going to help us. So I'll invite you two to come up now. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him, and they went into the tomb. 
he saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus, had not lying with the linen wrapping, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached out for the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. To her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener. She said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'll invite Patricia forward for our next reading. What are you growing in the garden of your mind? What do you, what do you water, nourish, feed? Do you plant seeds of forgiveness, of love? Or, your, or do you fertilize weeds of anger, resentment, fear? What are you growing in the garden of your heart? Do you allow sunshine to reach dark pain in the corners of your heart? Do you allow tears to wash it clean and nourish it? Or do you put up fences to keep out the feelings? Get on your knees, grow your own food. Decide what it is you want in your soil. Know what you are cultivating, what you are growing. A lot can grow in the garden of your, of your body if you let it seed, nourish it. Allow it. Watch it grow. Over the season of Lent for the past month and a half, we've been looking at this season in the church year from a perspective of being good enough in God's eyes. Traditionally, many of us approach Lent or think of Lent as a time when we dwell on our shortcomings, when we need to get back on track. Some of us give up unhealthy habits or try to take on new spiritual practices, much of which is all an attempt to improve what currently is not good enough. Sometimes it's hard to remember that we are already good enough and loved by God. That's not an excuse just to be comfortable with the way things are, but to give permission for being human. None of us is capable of perfection, but we are all capable of transformation. Part of the imagery we used for the season was plants. We planted our own seeds on the first Sunday in Lent, and week by week we saw how they grew how they transformed from tiny seeds to sprouts and seedlings. New life emerged from the dark soil. Things were happening below what we could see. Interestingly, in our gospel reading, Mary Magdalene confuses Jesus for a gardener. Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie, authors of Good Enough, the book that we've been looking at over Lent, they write that a gardener knows the kind of hope it takes to sow a seed in the ground to cover it with dirt, to bury it in the cold winter surrounded by naked trees, to leave it for a few months, trusting that with the magic amount of water, air, and time, something new will be born out of a single seed. 
And of course, seeds only reach their potential when they are buried. When things look most lost, most dark, most covered, most long gone, most hopeless, that's when the seed is undergoing the most important change. The writers continue, seeds must be buried and some seeds have to undergo drastic circumstances to allow for new life to burst through the seed coat. Sequoia seeds, for example, germinate only when burnt. Other seeds need to be kept in pitch black for a long time. And sometimes other seeds sit dormant for years before something causes them to sprout. Gardening requires a certain kind of hope. Envisioning new life in the midst of darkness, Gardeners toil, pluck, and prune, trying to get a bloom. The act of gardening is a sign of hope. Perhaps Mary mistakenly identifying Jesus as the gardener is actually an appropriate misconception. Jesus at work in ways seen and unseen, cultivating and tending to things on the surface and below it too. Even the Easter story begins while it was still dark. Not in the morning glow of sunshine that we have now, but in the darkness with Mary's pain, fear, and confusion, her weeping and searching. In some ways, maybe many ways, it's hard for us to imagine what Mary might have felt like. Easter for us is a time of joy and celebrating, in some ways you can say certainty, with the language that we use in our creeds, like the Apostles' Creed. In a lot of ways, we are unlike Mary, and that's okay because we're in a much different time with very different lives and different journeys. Interestingly, Peter, the other disciple, and Mary all have different experiences that first Easter morning. Mary sees the stone rolled away from the tomb and tells the others. The two of them go see the tomb. Peter goes in and sees the cloths, but there's nothing written about his thoughts or beliefs. The other disciple, however, goes into the tomb, and it says that he sees and believes. Mary stays outside the tomb, looks in, turns around, and encounters the risen Christ. We know Peter eventually becomes the rock on which Jesus builds his church, but these three individuals have very different experiences that Easter morning, all of them good enough, each one sufficient for believing in Jesus' resurrection. Like seeds that are planted, Each one has a different path to growing and bearing fruit. Each seed, each believer is good enough. And you are good enough. Each one of you has your own path, your own journey, and your own time and conditions needed to grow and to become what you are intended to be. Jesus as a gardener might be helpful imagery for us as a variety of seeds and plants in different stages of our lives and growth held together in a garden and growing alongside each other. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. We are invited to experience the gardener's love and care as we grow in him and become our full selves planted side by side. Happy Easter. Amen. I invite you to stand as we uh, sing together our next hymn. The words are on the screen. If you want to follow along in the hymn book, it's number 260.
Please be seated. God shows us what is good and what does the Lord ask of us to do what is right, to be kind and to walk humbly with our God. Let us offer our lives and our gifts to the God who gives us life. Just to note that there are offering plates at the, the back of the sanctuary. Uh, if you like to give electronically, there's also um, these inserts in your pews. There's a QR code on the back, which will direct you to our website if you'd like to give electronically as well. Um, and for those who are worshiping online, you can also find information on our website. Let us pray. God of resurrecting grace, we offer our gifts and with grateful hearts, recognizing how much you have given us in yourself and at great cost. May the gifts we have offered to you spread hope and joy in the world you love. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I'm going to lead our prayers of intercession today from the middle of everyone, since we're the gathered body of Christ here on Easter, celebrating um, new life and uh, our risen Lord. And for our prayer today, if you feel comfortable, you can open your hands if you'd like to pray that way. You don't have to. I always say to our kids, if it helps to fold your hands, you can. If it helps to close your eyes. And we'll have a response as well. So when you hear, Lord, in your mercy... I'll invite you to say, hear our prayer. Let's practice it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray together. O oh Lord our God, we bless you because you have promised to love your people. At Easter time, you surprise us with joy and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our neighbors who are in need. Help everyone to find healthy food, the medical care they need, and good places to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for neighbors near and far who are in trouble. Deliver them from anything evil and keep them safe from every danger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for neighbors who are sad or lonely, Support them with your compassion and surround them with community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for neighbors who are sick or suffering. Pour out your healing power upon them to strengthen them in their weakness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, at Easter time, we pray for all those who need your resurrection hope, who are between Good Friday and Easter, hoping to be surprised by how the story ends. Our Lord, our God, let your help and healing shine on us like the sunrise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give light to those who wait in darkness and guide us on your path of peace through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who teaches us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day through the order of service, the order of service of debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Know where we go where God isn't with us, and knowing that new life is always possible. And as you go on this Easter Sunday, know that the Lord God is with you, the peace of Jesus is with you, and the community of the Spirit surrounds you always. Amen.